morning, and welcome to the online campus of Northside Baptist Church. We are so grateful that you have decided to make Northside a part of your Sunday morning worship. If you are a guest with us this morning, you are our honored guest. And if you would do us the favor of texting the word online to the number that is on your screen, we'd love to get a little bit of information from you, as well as send you a small gift as our way of saying thank you for joining us today. And now before we begin our service, we do have a couple of announcements that we would like to make you aware of before we begin. Well, it's that time of year again. I know what you're thinking, what time of year? Well, it's that time of year where we spring forward. So make sure that you move your clocks forward one hour before you go to bed. And we'll see you next Sunday, March 14th on time at nine o'clock. Hey church family, we hope that you'll go ahead and mark your calendars and make your plans to be with us Palm Sunday weekend. The Celebration Choir will be performing the Easter musical, My Easter Story. We have three performances for you. The first one is a mass required service on Saturday, March 27th at 6 p.m. Then on Sunday, we will be performing during both of our 9 and 1030 services. You can go online and make reservations under the Easter at Northside tab on our website. Okay, so I know last week, Tree mentioned egging someone's house. Well, let me explain exactly what he meant. Easter at Northside, we are going to invite families that are unchurched to come to our worship services. So how is this gonna work? Go online to Easter at Northside and sign up for an egging kit. Now what this involves is some Easter eggs, candy, some toys, and then you go out and find a friend or a neighbor that has children and put these eggs in their yard. Also included in this packet will be an invitation that you leave on the door, inviting them to one of our four services the weekend of Easter. If you have any questions, you can go on our website, as mentioned earlier, or you can find Miss Jen and she'll be glad to give you more information as well. We hope you'll sign up for an egging kit. So this year, we're doing things a little bit different for our Good Friday service. In years past, we've met right here on our campus on Good Friday. Well, this year, on Friday, April 2nd at 7 p.m., on our Facebook page, we are going to premiere our Good Friday worship experience. There's going to be music, there's going to be a devotion, there's even going to be a little section in there for our children to get engaged as well. We hope that you'll set your calendars, mark your calendars for 7 p.m. April the 2nd, Good Friday, and be a part of our Good Friday worship experience. Can you believe it? Easter is only four weeks away. That's right, four weeks from today is Easter Sunday. To a Christian, that's our Super Bowl. And we are excited about all that's going to happen on that Easter Sunday. Now, we are going to have four services that weekend. The first one is going to be at 7 p.m. on Saturday, April 3rd. And then on Easter Sunday, we will have our two regular services at 9 and 1030. And then we will have our mass required service at 2 p.m. Now we are asking for social distancing purposes that you go to our website under the link Easter at Northside and reserve your spot for one of those four services. We can't stress the importance of reserving your spot for one of those services. Again, we wanna make sure that we have enough room for everybody to social distance. All right, kids, this coming Tuesday night, March 9th from 6.30 to 7.45 is our next Rooted Kids Ministry Meetup. This month's meetup theme is Rooted in Joy. We hope to see you there. And while you're there, we'll be doing a special Easter project. Hey, this is just a quick reminder about our Easter at Northside t-shirts. You can go on our website under our Easter at Northside events and you can order a t-shirt there, or you can stop by in the lobby today after the services and place your order with me. Reminder, Shirts must be paid for at time of purchase. I am so excited because camp is coming. That's right. For any of our students who have completed second grade through the sixth grade, Center Kids is right around the corner. And we need you to sign up and make your reservations. Now, Center Kid is June 25th 
through the 27th. There are two ways that you can sign up. You can either go on our website under the Kids Ministry tab and sign up there and pay your $50 deposit. Or if you go and find Miss Jen, she'll be glad to get you signed up for camp. You don't want to miss it. Hey, church family, this afternoon from 12 to 1230 is going to be our drive through offering. We would love to see some of you that maybe we haven't seen since last March when COVID started. And we just want to say hey and minister to you in any way that we can. So this afternoon from 12 to 1230, right here on our campus, is our drive through offering. We hope to see many of you there. Well, that's all the announcements we have for this week. Before we go live to our service, we do have the honor of having Kenny Rager with us today. Uh, this weekend was our D-Now weekend here at Northside, and he is a part of that D-Now weekend, so he will be preaching for us this morning. Kenny Rager is with the Kentucky Baptist Convention, and he is the church evangelism strategist. So let's welcome Kenny this morning to Northside Baptist Church. Uh, putting that together during a COVID situation. So appreciate Tree. If you see him, tell him thank you very much. And we have a young man by the name of Kenny Rager in the house today. Kenny's going to be preaching for us. Everybody say hello, Kenny. Hello. Yeah. If you're watching by Facebook Live, type it on your Facebook feed. Hello, Kenny. I know 20 of you did by faith. All right. It's great to see you. Can you believe Easter is coming up four weeks from today, and we're going to have four in-person worship services on Easter weekend. We have a Saturday night, 7 o'clock. We have Sunday morning, 9 and 1030, as usual, and we will have our 2 o'clock mask required service as usual. Also, as usual, we'll be doing our 9 and our 1030 worship services, and we will be having a Good Friday experience, which is really amazing, on Good Friday at 7. That'll be online. So a lot of great opportunities at Northside to get plugged in. And we also are encouraging you to invite people. We have four services, so we'll be able to socially distance, but we want you to invite people. How many can invite somebody to come for Easter, okay? All right, got four of you. Okay, five, six, seven. All right, that's good. Keep coming, keep coming. How many of you ever want to egg somebody's house? Yeah, right? How many of you ever want to egg the pastor's house? Yeah, more of you. My daughter does. Okay. All right. Well, this is your opportunity. Now, you can't really egg my house because we're kind of egg the houses of guests, okay, of people who don't normally attend Northside. And normally I'm here, obviously. But this is an opportunity to invite people to come to Easter worship services, either in person or online. Easter weekend, and what we're going to do is supply eggs for you, plastic eggs, along with invitations about Easter, so you can invite neighbors, you can invite friends, you can invite people to join with us on Easter weekend. We'll have all the supplies for you. All you got to do is take them to people's houses and place those eggs and information in people's yards. It's going to be a great opportunity to do that, so I hope you'll do that. You can check out how to do that online, or you can see Jennifer. She can help you to do that as well, and I can help you if you want me to help you find out more information about that. If you're a guest today, thank you so very much for coming. We are honored, honored, honored to have you, and we have several guests who are with us today. Thank you so very much for coming, and if you'd like a free gift, you can do that a couple of ways. You can either shoot me a text to 270-300-3078. That's my cell phone, or you can fill out a card and place that in one of those offering baskets on the way out. We will send you a free gift card as a way of saying thank you for being here today. Also, if you're watching online today, maybe you haven't been able to get out and be with us in person. And I would love to see your smiling faces. And at 12 o'clock today, from 12 to 1230, just a 30-minute window there, we're going to have a drive-through offering. Even if you don't have any money to put in the offering, I would love to see you, say hello, pray for you, to let you know that we love you, we care about you, and we miss you, and we're glad that you're joining with us online. A lot of great things going on. You'll hear more announcements at the end of the service, but right now, let's pray, okay? Father, glorify Jesus Christ. May you be high. May you be lifted up. Pray for Kenny as he preaches 
pray for Paul and our worship team as they lead. Be exalted. We ask this all in Jesus' name. And the people of God said together, amen. Let's... Well, good morning. Good to see you this morning. We're going to start out by singing. We've waited for this day. We've gathered in your name. That's what we're here to do. We're here to worship. So let's sing this out this morning. Open up the heavens. We've waited for this day. We're gathered in your name, calling out to you. Your glory like a fire, awakening desire. Burn our hearts with you. You're the reason we're here. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart and filling every part of our brains. Oh, let's sing it out. Your presence, your presence in this place, your glory on our face. We're looking to the sky, descending like a cloud. You're standing with us now, Lord, unveil our eyes. And you're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart. Show us, show us, show us your glory. Show us, show us your power. Show us, show us your glory, Lord. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, a mighty river. Show us, show us, show us your glory, show us, show us your power, show us, show us your glory, Lord. Show us, show us your glory, show us. Show us your power, show us, show us your glory, Lord. Oh, just make that your prayer this morning. Show us, show us, show us your glory, show us, show us your power, show us, show us your glory, Lord. Sing one more time. Show us, show us your glory. Show us, show us your power. Show us, show us your glory, Lord. Father, that's our prayer this morning, that you would show up, Father, in a mighty way. Lord, just work through us this morning. Teach us something from your word. We love you in Jesus' name. I love you, Lord. 
Oh, your mercy never fails me. And all my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. Yes, he has. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. your voice you have led me through the fire and in darkest nights you are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend and I have lived in the goodness Oh, sing this out all my life. And all, all my life you have been faithful. Oh, he's been so, so good. Sing it out. Declare it this all morning. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Cause your goodness is running after, running after me. And your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Cause your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Oh, sing that out. Oh, he's been good. This is running after. It's running after me. With my life laid down, surrender now. I give you everything. Cause your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Oh, sing this out now. Oh, just sing that to the Lord this morning. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, let's sing that again. Because all my life you have been faithful. Oh, just sing that out. Oh, let it go. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able. Oh, I'm going to sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I'm going to sing of the goodness. so good. Amen. Well, we're just going to continue to sing. We're going to worship him. Praise the Father. Praise the Son. Let's sing that out as we continue to worship as we sing King of Kings. In the darkness we were waiting without hope, without light. Till from heaven you came running, there was mercy in your eyes. To fulfill the law and prophets, 
to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt sing this out now praise the father praise the son praise the spirit three Feel the kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost, to redeem the whole creation. You did not despise the cross, for even in your suffering, you saw to the other side. Knowing this was our salvation, Jesus for our sake, you died. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. And the Lord The stone was moved for good, for the Lamb had conquered death. And the dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe. For the souls of all who come to the Father are restored. And the church of Christ was born, and His spirit lit the flame, and His gospel truth of old. Sing this out. Praise the Father now. Praise. God. Amen. He's worthy of our praise. Well, real quick, I'm just going to let you remain standing. We're going to talk through this real fast. And uh, listen, we've been doing this for almost a year now. That's hard to believe, isn't it, that we've been dealing with COVID for almost a year. You guys know how we handle our offerings, so I don't want to take a lot of time, but uh, you know the methods that are out there. They're on the screen as well. If you're watching by way of Facebook Live, they're there as well. Just We are so grateful that you are giving and you've continued to give. And as a reminder, if you're here on our campus, as you walk out the, the first set of doors to your right, there is a box. There's some baskets there. Feel free to drop off your tithe and offering there if you did not give it on your way in. Those of you watching by way of Facebook Live, thank you so much as well. Don't forget our drive through offering this afternoon from 12 to 1230. Those of you on our online campus, we'd love to see you in person and minister to you. And uh, so uh, that's just a, a reminder about that. But also, uh, we're going to pray. Uh, we worship through singing. We're going to worship through giving. Amen. And uh, so we're going to worship, and we're going to pray and ask God to bless our offering. But while we do that, not only do we want to ask God to bless our offering, but we want to pray over our pastor. Amen? Pray over our speaker this morning, Brother Kenny. So uh, as we're praying, I don't want you to ride my prayer to heaven. You pray your own prayer. And uh, let's just pray and ask God to bless Kevin, uh, Kenny. And uh, ask God to fill him with spirit. He's already preached one. I'm going to tell you what, he'll tear the wall. He's going to tear the paint off the walls. So sit back and, and just get ready. Um, I'll tell you what, it was just a great first service. But we got to ask God that uh, he'll just fill him again uh, with his spirit. It's a new service. It's a new crowd. And uh, I, I want you to pray for yourself. Pray that God will open your eyes, your ears, but most importantly, your heart to what God would have for you to learn 
from this message this morning. Would you pray with me? Father, we love you. And Father, we, we are so undeserving of your grace, your love, your mercy, your forgiveness. But Father, thank you that you loved us anyway. Father, thank you that you give to us. And Father, thank you for the privilege that we get to give back, a portion of what you've given to us. And Father, I pray that when we give, we would give cheerfully. And Father, I pray that you would just bless the gift, the giver, bless our church. Thank you for your faithfulness to our church. Father, may we continue to be a light in this community for you. And Father, we do pray for Brother Kenny as he comes in just a few moments to preach. God, I pray that you give him the power, the strength that he needs. Fill him again with your spirit. Hide him behind your cross. God, may we not see Kenny up here, but may we see Jesus Christ exalted high in this place today. And Father, for us as we listen, Father, not just with our ears, not just with our eyes, but God, open our hearts to the message that you would have for us to hear this morning. And Father, may we respond the way you would have us respond. And then, Father, as we leave in just a few moments, Father, may we go out into this world and be a beacon for truth. God, I pray that as we sing this next song, God, that it would be our prayer. God, that you would draw us close to you. Father, whatever we're facing this morning, I pray we'd realize that, Lord, all we need is you. You're all we want. You're all we need. So, Father, help us to draw close to you. Father, I'm thankful that you never let us go. I love you this morning. Thank you for loving me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, as we prepare our hearts for the message, would you just make this your prayer this morning as we sing this? Draw me close to you. To hear you say that I'm your friend. You are my desire. You are my desire. No one else will do. Because nothing else could take your place. To feel the warmth of your embrace. Help me find the way. Bring me back to you. have the ladies sing that verse. Sing that again. Draw me close. Draw me close to you. this out. You are my desire, and you are my desire. No one else will do, because nothing else could take your place to feel the warmth of your all right, everybody, let's sing this together. Help me find a way. Bring me back to you. Oh, let's just sing this out. Declare it. Let him know he's all you want. He's all you need. You're all I want. You're all I ever
sing that now. You're all I want. You're all I've ever needed. You're all I want. Help me know you are near. Help me Father, that's our prayer this morning, that we would just draw to close to you. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Amen. Can we just put our hands together and praise the Lord today, for he is a good and gracious God. Thank you so much for that time of worship. Man, didn't that just bless your heart? This morning. Well, my name is Kenny Rager. I serve with your Kentucky Baptist Convention on the evangelism team as an evangelism strategist. And I live right here in Elizabethtown, Kentucky. And it is an honor to be able to speak for you all this morning and, and uh, especially on the D Now weekend. And that's a, a great blessing. Saw a bunch of teenagers down here this morning. Uh, man, just it's phenomenal. Really appreciate your church. We recently moved to Elizabethtown, my wife and I did, back in. August, we were in Owensboro, and I was a pastor there and, until I came aboard the convention and then um, eventually relocated to, uh, to help the whole state with outreach and evangelism. And so that landed us in Elizabethtown. So we're glad to be here. We actually visited your church once, and uh, man, I'll tell you, you guys have a great follow-up. Your pastor was on it, and, and to be honest with you, I probably we probably would have united with you folks um, if Oveson Heights Baptist Church didn't gobble my wife up as a worship leader okay so uh, they, they wanted her just not me you know how that is they were all about her so we got a chance to we worship at Oveson Heights Baptist still part of the Severance Valley Association so it's great to be with you folks on this Disciple Now weekend and I would also like to say on behalf of of the Kentucky Baptist Convention thank you so much for your cooperative program support because of your giving through the cooperative program you are putting missionaries all across uh, the world serving the gospel and even right here in Kentucky as you're helping the gospel get to every home. So it is a pleasure to be with you folks today and to worship with you. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, I want to encourage you to turn to the book of Acts chapter 16, starting in verse 22. When Brother Tree invited me to speak for this D-Now weekend, he said, Kenny, we, our theme is distinct. That's the theme. And we're talking about being distinct in different areas. And, and the subject we'd like for you to speak about is being distinct in suffering. And I thought to myself, well, man, nothing really gets you up and going like a good message on suffering. You know what I mean by that? Nothing gets you more excited about a message on suffering. But the reality is we live in a world that's hard. Would you agree with me on that today? It's a tough world. And in all reality, the last year, man, it's been tough. And we have tried our best to figure out how to be safe, how to be secure in a very dangerous and scary world. I remember when we brought home our first daughter. Uh, her name is Gracie. I remember uh, we wrapped her up in that blanket, and we got her in that car seat, and man, we got her in the car for the first time leaving that hospital, and man, I was scared to death. Every speed bump we hit, I was afraid I was going to give her shaking baby syndrome. You know what I'm talking about, right? I mean, I was scared to death. When our fourth child came along, Nehemiah, my attitude changed a little bit. It was more like, well, just don't stick the the knife in the electric socket, and we're going to be okay. You know what I mean? So it's amazing how four kids make a difference in how you treat that first one, I guess. But you're, I guess you grow up a little bit. But the reality is we are in a dangerous world. I mean, stuff is crazy, and crazy stuff happens all the time. Hey, lost people experience hardship, and saved people experience hardship. We're not immune to suffering as Christians. Actually, Jesus told us, he said, in this world, you will have trouble. He promised us that, that we will have trouble. We are not immune to hardship under any circumstance. We are not immune to hardship. But the way we respond to hardship is much different than the way a lost and dying 
world is. And the, and the honest answer is, is that we're all looking to be safe in a dangerous world. We're all trying to be safe in a dangerous world world. If you have a copy of God's Word in front of you today, Acts chapter 16, starting in verse 22, let's stand to honor the reading of God's Word this morning. The Word of God reads this, and we're talking about Paul and Silas this morning. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates joined in, in attacking, and the magistrates tore the garments off them and gave orders to beat them with rods. And when they inflicted many blows upon them, they threw them into prison, ordering the jailer to keep them safely. Having received this order, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's bonds were unfastened. When the jailer woke and saw that the prison doors were open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul cried with a loud, cried with a loud, loud, with a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. And the jailer called for lights and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their wounds, and he was baptized at once, he and all his family. Then he brought them up into his house and set food before them, and he rejoiced along with his entire household that he had believed in God. Lord, we thank you for the word. May you bless it today. I pray to preach it within context, God, and to preach it faithfully. I pray, Lord, on this Disciple Now weekend, Lord, that you would open our hearts to receive what you're saying to us today. And Lord, if there be somebody here that does not know you, God, I pray that today they would open their hearts and find genuine, true safety in a dangerous world. And God, and I pray that they would be born again and be saved. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. And all of God's people prayed, amen. Thank you. You can have a seat. Paul and Silas are preaching the gospel. They're doing great things. They meet a demon-possessed girl, and they cast this demon out of this girl. And, and apparently the demon had somehow given the girl some sort of fortune-telling abilities, and she was making money for her slave masters. And when she got the demon out of her, the, the, her masters couldn't make money off of her anymore. So they got mad. And they decided to get Paul and Silas in trouble. So they brought Paul and Silas in front of the government, and they, they tried them in a humiliating trial. Then they beat them with rods. They, 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 they persecuted them. Then they threw them in prison. And they told the jailer to watch out for them. And the jailer locked them up in the inner prison, beaten, wounded, locked up in a cold, dark dungeon. You know, my wife calls me, uh, she says I'm whiny all the time. She does that all the time. And, and uh, you know, I'll get a stomach ache or something, and, and it just put me out. And she'll remind me that she had four kids and was, was doing all this. She reminds me of that all the time, you know. And she says, man, you, you just, you're, just, you're just a sissy. She tells me that sometimes. And, and I say, man, she says, tough it up, tough it up, you know. And that's why she tells me all the time. But, but I think about what if I was in Paul and Silas's shoes after being in a mock trial, you know, being made fun of, then had the tar knocked out of me, lip, you know, licked left and right, bleeding, hurting, and then thrown in a prison, locked up, what would I have been doing if I was in Paul and Silas' shoes? What would you have been doing if you were in their shoes, suffering like that? Would you be saying, oh, woe is me, this is such an injustice, or complaining and griping? But what did they do? What did they do, church? They sung and praised God. Can you believe that? Here they were suffering, and they were praising the Lord at midnight, singing and praising God. And the Bible tells us that all the other inmates listened to them. By the way, you know the lost world is listening to you 
when you go through hardship? Do you know that? The lost world is seeing how you act when you go through hardship. They're watching you. And here is Paul and Silas, and they are suffering and praising God. And man, it must have been some praise music because it brought the house down. Literally brought the house down. Because as they're singing and praising the Lord, God sends an earthquake. And that whole prison begins to shake, and the, the doors fly open, the rocks come crumbling down, and all the shackles come off. The jailer sees this. And he sees that all the prison doors are open. He sees that all the inmates can escape. And he gets really, really nervous. Because he was a Roman jailer. He worked for the Roman government. And there was a deal there that if you were a jailer, if you really had to keep a good watch over your inmates. Because guess what? If one of them escaped, <laughs> you had to pay their price. So if they got loose, you stepped up and served their jail time. Man, wouldn't that be a great, a great thing if you were running for jailer, you know, to have that kind of responsibility on you, you know? So you can imagine when they all are freed, his fate as a jailer would have been worse than death. Are y'all hearing me on this? It would have been really, really, really bad. So what does he do? He says, bring me a sword. And what was he going to do to himself? Do you all know? He's going to kill himself. It was going to be better than what the Romans would have done to him for letting all the inmates get loose. It would have been better. So he said, bring me a sword. I'm, I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to off myself. It's over. But Paul hears him. And he says, whoa, stop. Don't kill yourself. Look, everybody is still here, which is also a miracle, isn't it? I mean, God had just showed up. And he says, don't kill yourself. We're all here. And that guy is so scared. He runs and he falls at the feet of Paul and Silas. And can't you just see the tears in his face and him just nervous? And he says, sirs. Here he is at the feet of an inmate. Sirs, what must I do? Help me here. To be saved. And there Paul and Silas tells this man. See, Paul and Silas went through suffering and they were saved. This man is now suffering, and he needs, he needs what Paul and Silas has. He needs what they have. Friends, today, in a world that is hard, in a world that is tough, in a world that will challenge you, provoke you, hurt you, and even make you suffer, you need to know how to be safe in a world like that. And the way that you are safe and the way that you search for safety is by listening to the reply that Paul and Silas gives to this man. First, I want you to see that your search for safety begins with belief. If you want to be safe in a dangerous world, it has to begin with belief. Look at verse 31. Look at the very first thing Paul says to the jailer. Look at what he says. He says, believe. He says, believe. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? The very first word out of his mouth is what? Believe. Now, when we think about belief, we think about intellectual belief. For example, I believe Abraham Lincoln existed. How many of you all believe Abraham Lincoln existed? Yeah, that's an intellectual belief. You intellectually acknowledge that Abe Lincoln was born right down the road, right? You intellectually acknowledge that. You have an intellectual belief. But the belief that Paul says here in the Greek is a little bit different than an intellectual belief. Yes, you intellectually are to believe, but it's more than that. This is a belief to put your faith into or to have confidence. It is a belief that you are trusting in somebody or someone. It's more than just intellectual thinking. It is to have confidence. It is to put your faith, to put your trust into. It's a different kind of belief. Let me give you an example. Um, how many of you all believe intellectually that if we were to get on I-65 North, go to Louisville, that an airplane could take you through science, through physics and all of that, through engineering, an airplane could lift off from the Louisville International Airport and land at JFK in New York City. How many of you all believe that airplanes can do that? I do too, by the way. I do too. That's an intellectual belief. 
the kind of belief that's mentioned here is a little bit different. It's not just intellectually acknowledging that the airplane could take off. It is literally getting in your car, going down I six, going up I sixty five, going to that Louisville International Airport, buying a ticket, checking in your luggage, and then getting onto that airplane, buckling up, looking at that captain, and trusting that the captain will lift you off the ground and land you in JFK. That is the type of belief that is a biblical belief. It is putting your faith and your trust into somebody or someone. We'll say, can you, oh, it's a dangerous world. I don't know if I can, I just can't trust anything in this world. Well, how many of you all examined the pews that you set in before you plopped down on them today? Did you do that? How did you know that the pew you're setting in could contain the weight limit that is on your pew right now? Did you check the screws in it? Did you check the cushions in it? Did you check that it was equally, you know, spaced out to make sure that the pews would not collapse when you sat on it? Well, no, you didn't do that. So guess what? You're having confidence and faith and trust in the very seat you're sitting in right now. Did you know that? How many of y'all checked your brake lines before you pulled out of the parking lot today? Yeah. You put faith and trust and confidence and stuff all the time. Am I right? And what Paul is saying is that you have to believe and put your faith and confidence into something. So if you want to have safety in a dangerous world, you have to have some trust. You have to have some confidence. You have to have some faith. Number two, the search for safety will fail you. It will fail you unless it leads. My search for safety will fail unless it leads to the Lord. Now look what Paul says in that next line. Believe what? In the Lord Jesus. Believe in the Lord. So have confidence. Place your faith, not just into anything or anybody, but specifically place your faith, your confidence, your trust into who? Say his name, church. Jesus, into the Lord. You must put your faith and your trust into the Lord. He, what does that mean? You're talking about the man named Jesus, who was God, who became flesh, who came to this earth 2,000 years ago, who was born of a virgin, who, was, who, was, who grew up, and at the age of 30 began his ministry preaching the kingdom of God, proving who he was through miracles and, and through great acts and wonders. He proved who he was. And then he went to the cross. He suffered and died and bled on the cross. And on the third day, buddy, he rose from the grave. So we have a very specific belief. And that belief is into a very specific man, the God-man, Jesus Christ. That you place your faith and your trust into the shed blood of Jesus on the cross. Oh, but Kenny, what about, every, what about all these other religions? What about all the many people groups in the world? What about all of this? Are you saying that if they don't specifically believe and put their faith in Christ then there's no hope for them. What if they just sincerely believed and trusted in whatever it was that they believed and trusted? Surely God would have mercy on them. Why does it have to be just Jesus? Well, it sounds good on paper, but you know, just because you're sincere doesn't mean that you're not sincerely wrong. I mean, I've, I've got turned around before while driving, sincerely believing I was going somewhere. I hate to tell you this, but I'm going to tell you the truth. I'll, I'll just tell you. I was trying to get to Ashland, Kentucky, and I thought I knew where I was going. I plugged my GPS in the wrong way, and it took me to Ashland, Ohio. And I did not know that until I crossed over into Ohio. I called the director of missions that I, that I, that I was supposed to meet with. I said, buddy, you're going to have to take a rain check today. But I sincerely believed I was going to Ashland, Kentucky, and I landed in Ashland, Ohio. Big difference, FYI. Did you know that? I tell, I tell, tell them one of myself here. So you can be sincerely wrong. But yet Jesus Christ has proved himself. Did you know that? The reason that you can trust that Christ is the only way, the truth, and the life is because he first off said it, I am the way, the truth, and the life, which means that you have three options with Jesus. He is either a liar, he's lying to you. He is either crazy, he's a lunatic because he declared himself as God, or 
He's the Lord. He is who he, said he, who he said he was. And I believe that can be verified because you know what? The resurrection, it all hinges on the resurrection. If this Jesus thing wasn't true, all the Roman government had to do was to produce a body. If they could just bring a body, parade it around the street, could have shut the whole thing down. What about the disciples? Why do you have a bunch of scared guys that are running away and, 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 and cursing God like Peter did? denying that he even knew the Lord, and yet days later they're boldly preaching in the streets of the very same city that killed Jesus. What happened? By the way, if the disciples fabricated a lie, if they made it up, if they, if they dreamed up the whole resurrection deal, why did every one of them allow themselves to go through persecution and suffering and die in horrible ways, never recanting their faith? I understand why a second or third or fourth generation person dies for a lie, but not the people that made up the lie. And the disciples all suffered and died. You know why? Because they saw Jesus. So why do we have to believe in the Lord Jesus? You ready? Because he is the Lord. That's why. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Not a way, not a truth. He is the way, the truth, and he's the only way you'll live. So if you want to be safe in a dangerous world, you have to put your faith, believe, in the living Jesus Christ. Number three, my search for safety will only be satisfied, is only satisfied, you ready, with salvation. Only with salvation. Look at what he says. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will what? You will be saved. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, he tells this man. And he even says, you and your household. And, and when you read the rest of the story, it's so cool. The guy, the jailer, gets saved. He takes Paul and Silas, he takes them and out in the courtyard and he washes their wounds and he cleans off their blood and bandages them up. And then Paul and Silas turns around and baptizes him and his family. Probably, commentators would say that the same water source or trough or whatever it was that, they got bap that, that the jailer got baptized in is probably the same water that they washed the wounds of Paul and Silas in. What a sight, amen? What a sight. And the whole family got saved. Whole family, each of them individually believed and trusted in Christ, because Paul and Silas went through suffering. Amen? Isn't that wonderful? Well, Kenny, what were they saved from? I mean, how was the jailer saved? Well, yeah, his physical life was saved because none of the inmates escaped. But more than that, there was a spiritual salvation that happened. See, because of our sin, we are separated from God. If we are to die in our sins... We will split a sinner's hell wide open. That's the honest truth. And that's what we deserve. We deserve death and hell for breaking God's holy commandments and laws. That's what we deserve. But when Jesus went to the cross and took the wrath of God on him and he died in our place, now we can be made righteous because of the blood of Jesus. Isn't that just good today? And you know what? Salvation is not just salvation from hell, though it is, praise God, amen. It's more than that. When you get saved, you begin to experience salvation right now. The fruit of the Spirit dwells up within you and begins to, blo to bud and blossom, and God does great things. Hey, anybody better today because you got saved? <laughs> salvation is good, and it satisfies the soul. It gives you peace and hope and joy and forgiveness and yeah, heaven too. Don't, let's not forget that. Amen. But salvation is good. And the reality is, just hear me, it's a tough old world. And you're going to have problems. You're going to have suffering. And it's a dangerous world. And the only way you're going to be safe in this world is knowing that this world is not your home. And there's another world that's coming. The only way we can be safe is to be safely saved. Amen. That's it. And no matter what happens to the body, if Jesus is in you, you're going to be okay. 
It's why we can go through extreme hardship and suffering and pain and make it and make it. Many of you all know that hymn and you've sung it multiple times. It is well with my soul. You guys know that song? Beautiful, beautiful song uh, written in the late 1800s. You, you, most of you all may have known the history behind that story, but some of you may not know the history behind that story. Um, it was written by a man by the name of Horatio Spafford was his name. He lived in the late 1800s, actually knew D.L. Moody, and actually knew, knew Moody, lived in Chicago. He was a businessman, and uh, special, uh, if I understand correctly, worked with even insurance and the banking industry and that sort of thing. Uh, when the great Chicago fire happened and it burned up big parts of Chicago, Spafford had planned to take his family. He was a believer, by the way, and he had planned to take his family on a vacation to Europe. But in the aftermath of the fire, business required him to do lots of stuff in the city. It was a disaster. They just had to do what they had to do. So he sent his family on a, on a vessel, on a boat, uh, to go ahead and begin the vacation in Europe. Unfortunately, on November 22nd, 1873, while crossing the Atlantic Ocean, the boat that carried the passengers, which his wife and his two daughters was on, was struck by an iron sailing vessel, and it killed 226 passengers on that boat. Two of those passengers was Horatio Spafford, or was, was Horatio Spafford's daughters. His wife survived. She made it to England. She sent a telegram to Spafford with two words on it, saved alone, saved alone. When Spafford heard that, he immediately boarded a vessel himself to meet his wife in England. And as they were sailing across, the story goes, in his boat, the captain of that vessel that was taking them across told the passengers, he said, this is, this is the area somewhere around here where that boat went down. But can't you just imagine Spafford looking over the side of that boat into that cold water of the Atlantic Ocean, knowing that his two daughters were down there somewhere? Can you just imagine that, the suffering he was going through? But yet when he made it to England, as a believer in Christ, instead of cursing God or being mad, he knew that there was another world waiting for him. And he sat down and he penned these famous words, when peace, like a river, attendeth my way. When it's good, right? When it's good. When sorrows, like sea, billows roll. When it's bad. When it's bad. Whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say. Whatever happens to me, God, you've... This is what you taught me. It is well with my soul. Friend, you live in a very dangerous world. You will suffer. You will. But are you suffering while being saved? Are you safely saved? Maybe today you've never given your life to Jesus. But today is the day that you're ready to open up your heart and to believe in the Lord Jesus for salvation. I want to give you an opportunity today to open up your heart to receive Christ to save you. So you can know that you know that you know that you know you're born again. If you would, bow your head and close your eyes. I'm going to ask if your pastor, Brother Kevin, would come. And if your worship leader could come and, and as we prepare for the invitation this morning. <clears throat> With heads bowed and eyes closed today, I was seven years old when Christ came into my heart. And Sometimes people say, well, what could, 
what could the Lord save you from, Kenny, at the age of seven? Well, he saved me from my sin, but he also saved me from a lot of, <laughs> from a lot of stuff that I would have gotten into if he didn't save me. He knew me. Has there been a moment in your life when you've admitted you're a sinner and you said, I can't live like this anymore? I can't do this anymore? And you've decided to put your faith and your trust in Christ to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you were to die today, do you know that you know that you know you're safe in the arms of Jesus? Safe in the arms of Christ. If you've never received Jesus and you feel the Lord drawing you today, I want to invite you to open your heart to receive him. It's not magic words. It's not hocus pocus. Brother Kevin can't save you. I can't save you. Only Jesus. But would you open your heart today and pray a prayer like this in your heart? You ready? Dear God, I am a sinner. I have failed you. But I believe in Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. Thank you for saving me on the cross. I believe you rose again. Come into my life and save me. Save me. Thank you for saving me. With eyes still closed and heads still bowed, if the Lord came into your life today and Jesus transformed you, here in just a moment, I want you as we begin to sing to come out of your seat, out of your pew, to walk down that aisle to Brother Kevin and to make your salvation public, to let people know that Christ is has saved you. I don't want you to stay still. I want you to get up and come and make your salvation public. So, Father, we thank you for Jesus. We ask today, God, that you save somebody and do a great work. Give someone the courage to come to make their salvation public. We pray in your name. Amen. Would you stand? How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. The splendor of the King clothed in majesty. Rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, it trembles at his voice. How great is our God! Sing with me how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Well, amen. It's been good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you. You may be seated just for a brief moment. We do have some announcements. Before we do that, again, if you are a guest with us today, you are our honored guest. Thank you so much for being here. If this is the first time you've ever been here, maybe it's the first time in a long time, uh, we want to make sure that we get some information. Uh, and so uh, we, as you leave this morning, before you go out the double doors, if you look to your left, um, there'll be somebody there that would love to greet you, say hey, uh, just get a small little bit of information from you. And then we do have a gift that we'd like to put in your hands as our way of saying thank you so much for being here. Also, um, one of the announcements you'll hear about our T-shirts, I'm going to be out there as well. Um, if you'd like to go ahead and place your order for that right here today, you certainly can come see me 
and uh, we can place those orders for you. The deadline for that is um, this coming Thursday, March the 11th. So, um, Michaela, if you'll roll those announcements, and then Tree will come and close us.